<laughs> Today we're gonna be checking out this little gimbal and seeing if it's the best portable travel gimbal that money can buy. Let's find out. Hey friend, welcome to the Left Coast Studio. Levi Allen here. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Zhiyun Crane Plus. It's a smaller, lighter, more affordable version of the Crane 2, a handheld gimbal that I've come to love. I definitely was not in the first wave of early adopters when it comes to these small handheld gimbals. Call me a skeptic, but I really didn't think the early versions being released on the market would stand the test of actually using it in the field and needing to rely on it. So we're several years deep now into the gimbal craze. And today we're gonna to be checking out the Crane Plus and seeing if it passes the test, if it's worthy to take and trust on a video shoot. Came out to Vancouver today with my buddy Matt. We're just kind of testing this thing out. I don't know, we're just exploring around the city a little bit. I'm so used to following a subject and making all my shooting decisions off what their activity is or what they're doing. So I feel honestly a little lost today because I don't know what to film. I'm just like grabbing random shots. But honest, it honestly feels just a little bit repetitive, but hopefully I'm getting some various shots here where you can just see how the thing performs. So if you're gonna go buy a handheld small portable gimbal right now and you're considering this one, here are my quick thoughts right off the top. The Crane Plus gets a thumbs up for me. I think it's a great option in the lightweight gimbal market. Everything about this little guy makes it perform in a way that I'd hope that a small little gimbal like this would. And it definitely has improvements from the versions that came before. And the size really is kind of perfect. You can pack it down and slide it into the back of a backpack and I'll probably take it on trips that I would have left the crane to at home. So that's, uh, that's great for when you want to get those B-roll gimbal shots. There honestly isn't much that I disliked about it. If you're looking for your first gimbal or if you're looking for an upgrade from a previous model, I think you'll be happy with the small little adjustments and improvements they made to make it a better performing gimbal. The lightweight nature of this thing really stood out to me and I actually appreciated that far more than I expected. It's almost got like an Osmo-like quality to it, but you just put a mirrorless camera on top. And with that lighter weight, it gave me new ideas experimenting how to mount the thing. So I put it on this carbon monopod, extended the whole thing out, tried to get some of these jib-like shots. It's got a ton of smart features where it can do all these fancy moves and like time-lapse stuff. I haven't had a chance to test that stuff out. I don't find I normally use that stuff too much, but for guys that really want to use this for hyperlapse photography and like time lapses over time, that's pretty cool too, I guess. Another great thing about its really small size is I didn't really ever find myself feeling like I should put it down. And when I'm using the larger gimbals, if it's a Ronin, if it's even the Crane 2 with my multi-handle setup, I'm always secretly looking for times that I can just set it down and kind of rest my, my hands and my back a little bit. In normal handheld use, one of the flaws of using a lighter gimbal becomes pretty obvious, and that is it's actually really hard to hold something so light steady on the up and down axis. Now, obviously that's not a fault of the gimbal, that's just user error. So with better technique, and if you you know walk a little lighter on your feet, uh, you could definitely get rid of some of that up and down shake, uh, but it's a little trial and error and a little bit of practice. My favorite configuration was using the dual handle setup for it. I'm not sure if they intended you to unthread it like that, but I kind of just like forced it off and twisted it off. And that left me with just this one handle. So then when I put the gimbal on, I've got a two handle setup and I can mount the monitor off the side. So side by side here with the Crane 2, that's this guy over here. You can just see how much thicker and more involved the handle is, where this guy is just a tiny little tube coming down from that first motor there. The negatives design-wise for me, is I just wish they had a little display to show you what mode you were in and how much battery you had left. I don't like having to pull up my smartphone to be able to figure that stuff out. I found I was often just like clicking through the mode dial, trying to end up at what version 
of follow mode I was trying to get into. It was either the locked or the pan follow. It, it just felt hard to know which mode I was in. And then I just wish they had put in a quick release plate instead of a thumb screw thing. I don't really enjoy fiddling around with that. So I'm probably just gonna put a quick release plate of my own on. I honestly didn't expect myself to enjoy using this thing. I really like the Crane 2. When I'm out filming on a project, I'm probably still gonna bring the Crane 2. But when I'm traveling and I want a lighter weight setup, I've often left the Crane 2 at home. And that's where this guy really fits an interesting, an interesting space in my kit where I can simply just throw it in the back panel of my backpack. I don't even have to use it on a trip and it's not holding me back by having this larger gimbal with me. So this guy's definitely gonna come on a lot more day trips where I'm not intentionally going out to like film for a project but I might want to film for fun, this guy's coming. Or if I'm doing an international trip where weight is a concern, I might not bring the Crane 2 anymore. So that's gonna be it for my review. If you buy a gimbal of any kind, make sure you actually diversify your shots a little bit. Don't only shoot on the gimbal. Get some handheld stuff to mix it up a little bit. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And that's gonna be it for this one. Remember guys, life's so much better when you make stuff. Peace.